hello everyone follow me in this video as i do my second ever market craft fair vlog um, i actually set up everything the night before so this is me the morning of packing some keychains last minute super duper don't recommend staying up super late um, but I actually had the opportunity to bring everything to the venue the night before so this is actually a clip from the day before the market and since I was able to bring everything there and get my booth set up on the actual day I had some time to walk around and explore the market so here is that footage at the end of the video I'll talk about what I learned and how I did some comparisons to the first market I ever did and kind of just some insights that I had on my display, stock, pricing, what sold, pushing sales, and all that stuff. But for now, here's some market footage. Hi guys, so I'm going to talk about how my last market went and it was just this past weekend on March 11th, 2023 and it's the second ever market that I've ever done and I wanted to compare it to the first market I've ever done which was last month kind of give you an overall what I learned, what went well, what didn't go as expected and talk about my feelings on where I could improve for the future and kind of provide some tips as well for what I learned because you can always learn from my mistakes. Um, in the background, I'm just gonna be playing some footage of me setting up for the market because it's pretty boring and I was gonna record myself talking separately, but I might as well just overlay everything so that it's not too boring. <laughs> Overall, the market did go well. I did make back the amount of money that it cost me to 
sign up for the market but that was relatively cheap when you look at markets overall for the buy-in it was only 40 bucks um, we did have to bring our own table and stuff but that was fine it was still extremely cheap um, compared to the first market the this market seemed a lot slower than the first one there were a lot of people at the very beginning of the market and for the first maybe third of it and then it slowed down a lot after that so I felt very different sitting behind the table. There was a lot more downtime compared to the first one, but money-wise, I still made a comparable amount to the first market, and I did meet the goal that I had set for myself. Um, and one goal was actually to not sell out because I sold out at my first market, didn't bring enough stock, and then I felt like I was missing out on more profit. So I didn't sell out, which was good, but also disappointing. So I probably shouldn't set that as a goal next time. So in terms of stock, I brought a little bit over double of what I brought to the first market. Now the first one I did had just over 20 vendors and this one had just over 40. So in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, this is about twice as big as the other market. Maybe there will be twice as many people. So I should bring double what I brought to the first one, plus a little bit more because I sold out at the first one. However, I did also increase some of my prices for some of my um, smaller items just because I changed the way that I make some of them and they take a little bit more time. I think my keychains were a little bit expensive and I spent a lot of time on them and they do take a lot of time, but I think overall most people just aren't willing to spend $15 on a keychain whether or not it's it's handmade isn't as important it's just that it's just a keychain so not everyone wants to drop 15 bucks on it i think that will change how i stock things for the future and maybe i should focus more on having one main item that's a reasonable price that is still not too complex for me to make I did find that I needed to push sales a little bit more at this market and halfway through I actually decreased the price on some of my keychains. Um, so for the strawberry keychain I decreased it from $15 to $10 and I also offered for if you purchased over $50 then you get a free keychain. Which thinking back on it I really regret it a little bit because it still takes me a certain amount of time to make all of these items and as much as I wanted to hit my goal for how much I would profit from this market, I feel like I lost stock that I could have just sold at a, the next market. Um, and it, I ended up kind of undercutting my efforts to create each item. Which, it is what it is, um, that's what I thought I should do in the moment and it's done, but Hopefully I can have some more confidence to not do that in the future. Regarding what I brought and what sold at the market, pretty much everything that you see is what I brought. Um, the only thing is I have more of stock of everything under the table except for the hanging plants. Um, so I try to replenish the stock on the table as it's sold, but I noticed that it doesn't really create that sense of urgency that something's going to sell out if you just keep replacing stuff on the table. I don't really know if that impacts sales at all, but I know my little tiered basket stand definitely wasn't high enough and that definitely impacted my sales because several times I had people come over and comment that, oh, they didn't even notice that there were baskets there with flowers in them. They only saw what was on my table. And my table is pretty small, it's only 4 feet, and the majority of my bouquets are in the tiered baskets next to my table. And you'll see that later on in the video, I'm still kind of setting up the table display here. Um, but I think I want to replace the tiered basket situation in the future, because some of them sit just too close to the ground. I do have some markets coming up where they supply a 6 or 8 foot table. And since it's a larger table, I want to maybe put the bouquets on the table instead and have a similar box situation like I have with the little step displays where I have a box behind the bouquets basically so that you can see more at once. 
the other thing that I want to do for future markets is to offer a bit more customization. Um, hopefully I can create enough stock so that I can just have big giant baskets of flowers on the table and just have a price list for each flower and have people be able to pick which flowers they want in their bouquet and I'll just wrap it right there for them. There are some issues with the idea because logistically if it gets busy I don't know how long it's going to take me to wrap each bouquet. Um, it's going to be kind of annoying if everyone picks just the pink flowers and then I have all the blue, purple, whatever flowers left and nobody wants that. Um, there's a lot to think about still. The other thing is that the tiered basket situation is not collapsible at all and it's the most annoying thing ever and to get to this venue i had to go up three flights of stairs and i died a little bit to be honest i had to bring bring a couple baskets at a time and then carry all the boxes separately and i definitely think i'm going to invest in more large storage containers because it was just so exhausting I did bring a dolly, but there wasn't that much I could do with it because I had to go up the stairs and there was no elevator, so it is what it is, but definitely want to find something a little bit more collapsible for the future, especially if I'm planning to do more markets. Um, I'm kind of just talking endlessly, and I don't even remember what I've already talked about, but I did say earlier that I brought 2.5 times the amount of stock because it was twice as many vendors at this market uh, compared to the last one, so I assumed there would be twice as many um, people attending the market, which is... I don't think that was true. It definitely wasn't true. I think there were possibly the same amount between the two. At least that's what it felt like to me. Um, my number of sales is actually very similar between the two markets. Um, it's the only thing that was really different is how I was pricing things. I brought way more um, $100 plus items at the last market, which were giant big bouquets with keychains and bears inside of them, versus this one I mostly just brought smaller things. I think my most expensive thing was the little vases that I have. Those were $45 each, so that's my most expensive item. And also at this market, um, with more vendors, there were more people selling crochet goods and there were a couple other vendors that were also selling crochet flowers. Now the prices were all kind of in a similar range, but there is some loss of sale that will happen just because people are looking for something different. When it comes to this kind of crochet stuff, even if someone is selling the same item as you, it won't be exactly the same. Everything is handcrafted, so their colors are going to be a little bit different. The, you know, the length of the flower, how they arrange it, how they package it, it's all going to be a little bit different. So it just depends on what people are looking for. Um, in that kind of situation, it's just inevitable. There are a lot of markets that ask you to categorize yourself when you apply for the market, and a lot of them are juried. So when they pick who gets to sell at the market, they limit the number of people in each category. Um, and that would be the advantage of that kind of market versus one where they don't do that and just take everybody in. I think this one was juried to some extent, but I was admittedly a little bit frustrated and lowered my prices a little bit as a result and offered that keychain discount to try and get people to buy from my booth versus someone who was selling a similar product as me. Um, but again, I regret doing that, so <laughs> maybe don't do that. Or have um, an easier to make item to offer as a freebie because I had these tiny little tulip keychains and they are pretty intricate and it's basically the same amount of effort as making a whole flower if not more and I ended up giving a couple of those away for free and I didn't feel that good about it so keep that in mind if you decide to offer any kind of discount like that. Lastly regarding the, um, the variety of stock that I brought I definitely should have made more small cutesy stuff like the little weirdo ducks I have 
and less of the plants. The hanging plants did great. I only had two left by the end of the market, but I had tons of cactus and monstera and succulents left, um, and they didn't do as well. And I think I did say in one of my previous videos that it's important to kind of try and read your audience and try and predict what will sell well and what kind of products will be popular. Yeah, I didn't do that well. <laughs> I should have I should have brought more small cutesy stuff and maybe some more small plushies or bouquets with plushies. Um, but now I know for next time, but at the same time, the next market's going to be different and it's going to be a different audience. And to be completely honest, I won't really fully understand the type of audience at each market until I do it once. Or, you know what, I've done this one once and it wasn't even the same. So, every market is a learning experience, I guess is what I'm saying, and you never really know. Okay, that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have to say, so I'm just going to leave you with the rest of the footage because I've been babbling on for like almost 15 minutes now, it seems like. But if you have any questions about markets, um, I've done two now, so if that gives me any authority to offer advice, feel free to leave a question or a comment in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the other videos that I have if you're interested in seeing the whole crochet process or my preparation for the market or anything like that. And thank you for watching. Leave a like if you like it. Thank you!